Hi, everyone. For today's lesson, we are going to continue discussing very special parallelograms. In our last part of our lesson, we learned about rectangles and how rectangles is a parallelogram with four right angles. And now what we are going to do is we are going to talk about rhombuses. And it, so a rectangle had four congruent angles, but it was a parallelogram. So it had all of the properties of a parallelogram plus a couple of extras. A rhombus is a, a, a parallelogram with four, uh, with four congruent sides. So it'll have all of the properties of a parallelogram plus some extras. So for today's lesson, please make sure that you have the following. First of all, please make sure that you have the cutouts for rhombuses. So you'll want to have a rhombus and then the extra properties of a rhombus. So you're going to want to have both of these pieces. You're going to want to have a glue stick. Um, maybe it, perhaps a straight edge might be helpful, especially for drawing the diagonals. Something to write with and color. I always recommend that you have color. So please make sure that you have these materials before you get started with today's lesson. So just like before, I am going to paste my rhombus just to the side so that I can write information on the other side so that they are right next to each other. So we're going to take out our shape for a rhombus. And remember, a rhombus is a parallelogram. And that means that whenever you say that it's a parallelogram, it has all of the properties of a parallelogram. All of the properties of a parallelogram. But it's special. It's more special than just a regular old parallelogram. And that's because all of the sides are congruent. And because all of the sides are congruent, that means that there's going to be extra properties that will suddenly appear. But let's remind ourselves of all of the properties of a parallelogram. So this has all of the properties of a parallelogram. Number one, opposite sides are parallel. So I'm drawing in the parallel symbol. So opposite sides are parallel. So I'm going to mark it up on my picture using my parallel symbols. I'm going to draw in arrows showing that opposite sides are parallel to each other. Next, we have opposite sides are congruent. And that is true. Not only are opposite sides congruent, all sides are congruent. But if you think about it in just plain terms, these opposite sides are indeed congruent. Same thing with these opposite sides. They are congruent. This is a parallel, a rhombus is a parallelogram. So yes, it does have opposite sides are congruent, but it's a special parallelogram that says all sides are congruent. Four sides are congruent. So we're gonna mark that up on our picture. Three, we have um, opposite angles are congruent. Now, there's no right angles in just a regular old rhombus. So if you were to take out a protractor, you can see that this angle right here is going to be um, a, an acute angle, and this angle over here is going to be an obtuse angle. And you're going to see that there's going to be obtuse angles and acute angles. Okay, don't. All right. 
So these angles, the opposite angles are going to be congruent to each other because it's going to follow the same exact properties as a parallelogram. But they're not going to be right angles. They're just going to have angles that are congruent. So our opposite angles are going to be congruent to each other. Number four, because this has all the properties of parallelograms, the consecutive interior angles are going to be supplementary. That means that they will add to 180 degrees. So these are just the properties of parallelograms. And the same thing is going to be true here. The consecutive angles are going to be supplementary. That means that they are going to add to 180 degrees. Next, step five. The fifth and final um, property of parallelograms is that the diagonals bisect each other. So I'm going to go ahead and carefully draw in the diagonals and I'm going to find their measure. So if you just look at the diagonals, you can see that they're not going to be congruent like a rectangle. So if we look at these diagonals, it looks like this diagonal is about 11.8. And the halfway point right here is about 5 point, I take it back, and not 11.8, excuse me. This length right here is about 11 centimeters. And about 5.5, .5, which is the halfway point, that represents like a bisect. So it intersects at like that point, that midpoint. So this length is 11. And 5.5 and 5.5 and and add to equal 11. So let me go ahead and mark that up with different tick marks. And this length right here appears to be about maybe 9 centimeters. And with the halfway point being about four and a half right here. So the diagonals are not congruent. So I'm putting in different tick marks, but they do bisect each other. Now, I know it's kind of hard to tell, but there exist extra properties of a rhombus that I want you guys to be aware of. So let's go ahead and take out these extra properties. And those properties are actually going to deal with, the a couple of them are going to deal with the diagonals and the other is going to deal with the side. But we've already talked about all of the properties of, rhomb of parallelograms and now these are the extra properties of a rhombus. So the extra properties of a rhombus, once again, is that all sides are congruent. So they will be congruent to each other and you're gonna see a picture that's going to have tick marks showing all the way around. You're not gonna see right angles. You're gonna just see tick marks going all the way around. That's your clue that you're dealing with a rhombus. The diagonals blank opposite angles. And I know that it's kind of um, cool, like kind of tough to see, especially without a protractor, because I know not everyone has a protractor at home. But if you look at the diagonals, I'm just gonna focus on these down here. Do you see how each side of the angle appears to be about the same? Same thing right here, both sides of the angle appears to be about the same. That's because the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. Not only do they bisect each other, but the diagonals will bisect the opposite angles. So I'm gonna draw in the diagonals.
And we're going to mark up our picture to show that the diagonals are bisecting the opposite angles. So the opposite angles right here, I'm going to highlight the yellow angles. This is a full angle. And if it's being bisected, that means that this side is going to be congruent to this side. This angle is going to be congruent to this angle. And this angle will also be congruent to this angle. And because these are opposite angles, they are congruent to each other. So their bisected parts will also be congruent to each other. Next, I'm going to focus on this angle and this angle. These two angles, these purple angles, are congruent to each other because we know that opposite angles are congruent. But the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So what we're going to mark up is that this angle will be congruent to this angle. And this angle will be congruent to this angle. So their bisected pieces are going to be congruent to each other. The last extra special property is kind of visible right here, but do you guys see how those diagonals kind of form a right angle? So therefore, the diagonals are perpendicular. That means that they intersect to form right angles. So they're actually called perpendicular bisectors. So the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors because they bisect each other at a right angle. So I'm going to draw in the diagonals one more time. So not only do the diagonals bisect each other, but they bisect each other at a right angle. So all the way around, if it helps you, draw in that they, each of these corner angles are going to be right angles. So they are perpendicular bisectors. So although the diagonals are not congruent themselves, they will uh, bisect each other at a right angle. So the thing that I want you guys to note is that it, all of the triangles of a rhombus are right triangles. So every single one of these is going to form some kind of right triangle. So I want to let you guys know that these triangles, there's going to be two pairs. So these angles, or this triangle, is going to be congruent to this triangle. I mean, I guess it's like four um, congruent triangles now that I'm looking at it. Um, so all of these triangles are going to be congruent to each other because they all have um, side angle sides. Look at that. We have a side. The angle is a right angle side. Side angle side. Side angle side. Side angle side. They're all going to be congruent. So I'm not going to write two. I'm going to write the word four. Congruent. Right. Triangles. So the key that I want you guys to know about those right triangles is that um, you're allowed to use the Pythagorean theorem. And I'll remind you what that is. That is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And that might help you as you are trying to identify certain side lengths. So you might need to use this information as you are doing some of your problems. So once again, in a rhombus, it follows all of the same properties as a parallelogram, but it has extra properties. Those extra properties are all of the sides are congruent versus a regular parallelogram, all of the sides are not congruent, only opposite sides are congruent. The diagonals bisect the opposite angles, so you'll see that the angles are going to be, have equal measure on each side of the diagonal, and the diagonals are perpendicular, so they will form right angles in between. And you will see that there will be four congruent triangles, right triangles, that allow you to use the Pythagorean theorem. 
And that is the end of this lesson. If you have any questions over um, rhombuses, please make sure that you email me and let me know right away. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day.